Hello everyone, my name is Logan and welcome back to the lecture hall. For today's video, we are covering the laws of limits. So, we know what a limit is, it's our approach as we get to our function as the limit as x approaches a of f of x will equal something and it's whatever that point approaches. And so now we need to figure out, well, cool, we have what a limit is, how do they work? Well, we have that the sum of two limits is equal to the limit of the sums. Um, the uh, difference of two limits is the su uh, the difference of so the limit of the difference. The so the limit as x approaches a of c times f of x is equal to that same constant, or c is any number. C times the limit of that function, and then we have product and quotient rules. I would pause and take notes. So two limits multiplied together is the product of their limits. Uh, and then two limits divided by one another is those two functions divided and then their limit. To continue with our limit laws, we have that the limit of f of x to the nth power is equal to the nth power of that limit of f of x. We then have the limit as x approaches a of c, where c is a constant, it will just equal c, right? Because we have no function. Well, our function is just that line, um, y equals c. Um, and then if we have the limit as x approaches a of x equals a, well, x, we can just plug in a. That's the fact of the matter. We can, we have no domain restrictions. We can just plug it in. Then we have the limit as x approaches a of x to the n. Well, that's going to equal a to the n. And then we have the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of x. Well, that's going to be equal to the nth root of a. And then we get our corollary to these. It states that the limit as x approaches a of f of x to the not nth power, but the nth root, the nth root, bang, is equal to the nth root of that limit. So we can screenshot, right? To continue on, we have two more statements, and it states, if f of x is a polynomial or rational function, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x will equal this f of a. And this should make a relative amount of sense because if we have no domain restrictions, we have nothing that could give us not a number, well then, of course, our limit will approach the function value. Then if f of x equals g of x when x does not equal a, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of g of x, provided that the limit exists. And this should make a level of sense because if the functions are the same, the limits would be the same if they had a limit. Next, we have a theorem for the condition of a limit, uh, or when can we have one? Well, the limit um, f of x equals L, um, I guess I should say the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals L if and only if, that's what this double arrow means, it's a biconditional. The limit as x approaches a from the minus of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x, which would equal that L. So assuming that our functions meet at the same place, then our limit will exist um, from each side, I should say. And then we have theorem two, and it states that if f of x is less than or equal to g of x when x approaches a, or x is near a, and the limits of both exist, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So the final thing I wanted to cover today is our squeeze theorem. And this is a very important uh, and very useful theorem. And it states that if f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, when x is near a, and the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals the limit as x approaches a of h of x, and that's equal to L, um, our limit, then g of x, the limit of g of x as x approaches a will also equal that same L. Um, and this should make a level of sense, right? If one function is smaller, one function is way bigger, and they both approach the same thing, then the function in the middle would also meet the same thing. And now we're like, when would we use this? Well, sometimes we get limits of functions that are fucked, 
right? They, you don't know how to uh, interpret something like this, but you know how to interpret something else that is bounded close to it. So if you can find a function that's bigger and a function that's smaller, you can compare it if they approach the same place to your original function and you will get your limit. So that's everything I wanted to cover in today's video. As always, my name is Logan. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.